Okay, so in the last video, we looked at adding two different animation sequences and toggling between them when you hit the space button to make them jump. Now we need to actually move their physical location because right now we haven't been moving the coordinates. We reviewed what the climb cycle looks like, but it's not actually moving of the object it's the object is being redrawn within the frame itself and it's important to differentiate between the image being redrawn and the actual positions movement so now we're going to actually move the position of the object so to do that we need to add physics so add component physics 2d rigid body among other things you can add gravity now, physics really wouldn't be much of anything without gravity, so that's really a key part of it. But we don't want full gravity. Uh, let's make it like 0.5. Now let's go into the script. We already have a section that checks for the pressing of this jump bar, um, the space bar to jump. Up to this point, all it did was change the animation sequence. Now we actually want to move the character. So we're going to do another get component. This time it's the rigid body 2D that we just added. And we want to change velocity. And it's a new vector 2 because we're only changing X and Y. Well, this case we're not going to change X because it's a standing jump as opposed to a running jump. So X is not going to move, but Y is going to move, say, let's do 4. So if you want the character to move up on the screen, it's a positive number. If you want them to move down on the screen, it's a negative number. If you want them to move left, it's a negative. If you want them to move right, it's a positive. So let's see how that looks. Now you're also going to notice them drop slightly because of the rigid body, because of gravity, and they're going to impact with the floor. So there they are. Now we're going to hit the space button. That's a pretty decent jump, maybe a little bit too high, but eh, that's okay. Because right now they're jumping almost exactly their body height, so that's a little bit much, but that's okay. So just like that, we now have the ability to make them jump. So we need them to be able to jump onto something, which is ultimately what we're leading to. So in between videos, I added this. It's just a square. So let's go ahead and put that in. Again, check the Z to make sure that it's not um, behind the camera. It needs to be in front of the camera. And we're just going to change a few stats. Like, let's make this 0.5. Let's move this down. Now, some of this... is purely arbitrary, like I said, as far as how high can they jump, uh, that kind of thing. So we don't want this to move. So it's not going to get a um, rigid body. So we don't want gravity to apply to this object. So let's just do this to line up. So let's jump just about right. I wasn't counting for the fact that they were going to drop ever so slightly. In fact, let's just take care of that now. Let's move them. Let's move this. Okay. So the question is do you want them to auto grapple or do you want to be or do you want to have to trigger it? So I'm thinking that we're going to um, auto collide and then we can always build upon that later uh, and have you have to click a button. So it all depends what game you're playing. And as I've mentioned in my other videos, these processes tend to be iterative. Okay. So you get the basics and then you build upon that. So this, it's going to auto detect the collision. Um, to have a button click would have to have an auto detect of the collision and checking to see if the button is being pressed at the same time. So it makes sense to do just the auto detect first. Again, iterative. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, we have to introduce the new idea, and that is the idea of collider boxes, because rigid bodies allow for physics, allow for movement. Now we need to have collisions. So the platform, and let's go ahead and rename that. So platform, that is going to get add component, physics 2D, and this time it's a box collider. You can't see it, but there's a green border around the image. Now, we want her to have a box collider, which um, we already added, but the problem is we really don't want this to collide and detect the, the collision. We really want up here for where the hand is. So what you can do is you can actually add a second collider. So add component, physics 2D, and what we could do is we could differentiate them by using a circle collider. Is what we can do is we can, um, we when they're climbing, we could say disable the box collider so that isn't used for the collision accidentally. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a circle collider. As you can see, it's way too big. So let's click on Edit to shrink the diameter. And now let's go ahead and move it. So the offset, let's move that up two. Nope, that's too much. How about one? All right, so let's zoom in. Let's shrink this a little bit because we don't want to be too, too generous. And again, this is arbitrary. It's a uh, game balance. And what you want to do is have this be lined up with her hand. So we're going to run this. But then we're going to come up here to Window, and we're going to choose Scene. And that way, when she jumps, we'll see if the hand is lined up with that. So jump. And it looked like the hand its not quite high enough. So the circle is too high. So we're going to do a couple things. For the box collider, we're going to edit that and bring the top down. So that's not colliding. Bring that over. And then we're going to bring this down. And we're going to run it again. And don't worry about the bouncing around. It's because we haven't set them as triggers yet. So again, window, scene, and this is a great debugging method. Um, that way you can see the collider boxes and so forth, which you can't see here. And now you can see that it's just above the hand. So we're almost where we want to be. So it looked like one even probably was right. Okay, so that should do it for adding the collider circle. Now we need to actually detect the collision and make a decision based upon that. So to detect the collision, we now have to do a similar process to the platform that we did to the collider boxes for the hero. And that is right now the collider box is the same size as the image. So that means if she hit down here, that would detect a collision and then go into the climb, um, that would go into the climb uh, animation. We don't want that. We only really want it if she grabs the upper corner here. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this. So this would be like that, okay? And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to add a second collider box. So physics 2D, box collider, and it's going to be just that little sliver. Now let's highlight them both. So yeah, there's a little bit of space in between, perfect. So this way, what we can do 
is we want to set this one here as a trigger, and this one can stay solid because we don't want her to fall through the uh, platform, but we do want her to be able to climb up it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this bottom one as a trigger, and now we're going to put the code onto the character looking for a collision with a trigger. So in our actions script, which is attached to her, void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D other. Absolutely essential that uh, there are no typos. It is case sensitive. So capital O T E D capital C D. All right. So this is going to detect a trigger with the object that the script is attached to. It's attached to the player. So if there is a, 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 if there's a collision with the trigger, what happens in here will be true. And so what we're going to do in here is we need to trigger the climb um, animation, which we have not added yet. We have the images, but we did not create it yet. The second thing that we need to do is we need to shut off the velocity right away. So let's start with that. So we'll shut off the velocity. So it'll be zero, zero. And just for good measure, we will also set gravity scale to zero. So in other words, we're effectively shutting off gravity. We don't want gravity to have an effect when she's climbing. Great. So let's test this, actually. So what happens is she's going to jump, and when the collision occurs, uh, what's going to happen is she will stop and just kind of hang there. Now, now that I think about it, I did make a mistake, because since the second collider box goes all the way down to the bottom, we still have an issue where she can collide with the bottom. So we're just going to edit that so she can only grab onto the top there. And this kind of little nitpicking that I'm doing, this is absolutely game balance. So there's no 100% right and wrong. Uh, it all depends how forgiving you want to be. Obviously, if you let the collider box come out all the way out here, kind of compromises the integrity, puts it really on easy mode, not to mention you then have to adjust. You have to move the character forward before they climb or else they'll be climbing in mid-air. So you start seeing why some of these games seem so glitchy when they come out. It's because there's a lot of things that have to be considered. So let's have her jump now. Actually, she won't hit it because we need her to be under it. There we go. So she climbed up. So it was, excuse me, she did not climb up. She jumped up, and when she grabbed onto that, it stops. So we're getting close. Now, it looks weird because what happens is it goes back to the idle animation without her uh, hanging on up here. So it looks like the position is wrong, but is actually correct. And if you want to just tweak this a little bit, what we can do is we can click on the hero. And just for this uh, particular example, we'll make a modification here. So uh, the top box collider, you can just edit it. So uh, you can shrink it in. And now when they jump, you shouldn't have that uh, collision that um, it should avoid a collision with this. And the other thing that we want to do is in the animator, we'll click on this. So we're clicking on the transition. So let's, if we undo exit time, just run it like that. There we go. So that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll leave it at like that for now on um, this particular lesson. So now you have them jumping, uh, clinging, and staying there. Okay. Now what's going to happen is 
uh, in the next video, we're going to add the climb animation and they will automatically climb up. So as you can see, the collision isn't quite right. So what we'll do is as a last step, we're just going to take that circle collider, we'll bring it in a little bit more, and we'll also bring it down a little bit more. There we go. So as you can see, it's just a matter of tweaking that. Uh, I'll probably do that between videos, but it looks like the change is going to be somewhere around rather than 0.9, maybe 0.7. It's just nitpicking until you get it to look right. So that should do it for this video.